of Quantitative and Derivatives Research. Marco, welcome. Thank you, Melissa. Dead zone. What do you mean by that? Yes, so basically, if you look at the S&P price action over the last two months, uh, it's been in extremely tight range. Actually, it's one of the uh, 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 longest periods of market really not moving at all. Um, what are the drivers of it? First, uh, very low trading activity in July and August, but more importantly, very high level of what we call pinning, market pinning. And that's basically the effect when clients sell call options into the market and then dealers are long these options. So hedging of dealers basically cause market to trade in a narrow, narrow range. Um, so one measure of that pinning effect is, is basically a uh, call to put imbalance on, on the option content or so-called gamma, which reached all-time highs, historical all-time highs in August. You know? so, so we had basically market volatility collapsing. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a result of that, many investors um, uh, start re-levering. They start increasing leverage. So for instance, investors like risk parity or volatility targeting strategies, they start actually increasing, uh, increasing the leverage and, and uh, that poses the risk to market. Also what happens then is the clients, they put a stop loss order closer and closer to the market level. They buy put options which are struck closer and closer and that creates a risk for then quick reversal and spike in volatility. So we think that that type of spike is, is more likely than not in September. Uh, because basically in September, typically you see some uptick in volatility that can then trigger some of these. So you expect effects. a September sell-off is yeah, we, the bottom we line. Yeah, we expect definitely increase in volatility in September. Uh, uh, more, more likely than not sell-off as well. Um, and, and again, it would be triggered by higher volatility, mm -hmm. delevering from various uh, uh, systematic strategies and some of these option effects that then go in reverse. Um, Brian, was BK, was, was talking about everybody being on one side of the boat. Is that the case with the CTAs, with the risk parity funds out there right now? they're all sort of in the same sorts of trade exposed to the same sorts of, of exposures and so therefore when things reverse that's going to cause a domino effect correct correct so I would say like market is at all-time highs so CTAs or trend followers are very long and that's true not just in US but in Europe and Asia as well um, and then you have risk parity funds and vol targeting funds who are also very long you know so 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 they're all they're all very long and the export you know they're all exposed to increasing volatility so if the volatility goes up they programmatically needs to decrease their exposure. So that selling pressure is going to be even harder. Correct, correct. So that's going to add sort of fuel to uh, f fuel to volatility. You know, and, and in terms of triggers, I mean, August, uh, September will have a number of sort of uh, potential catalysts from central banks. But even if those play out actually uh, relatively benign, September typically have just a seasonal uptick in volatility. You know, so so historically, September volatility, September and October tends to be highest volatile months. Volatility is about 20, 30 percent higher in September than in any other given month. You know, so so we think even just the seasonal optic in volatility can actually cause some of these uh, uh, effects. So, Marco, the S&P closed at 2186, give or take. So, mm -hmm. what are you talking about? Can you quantify in terms of sell-off? What are you looking for on the downside? Well, so first, you know, we would look for something to tip over markets to 2160, 2150, where all these effects start kicking in. You know, so if that happened, then you could go quickly, maybe up to 100 points lower, right? You know, and at that point. Um, you know, we're going to probably be like sort of uh, already October, you know, you'll have elections coming. Um, uh, there's going to be a number of data, macro data coming out. Uh, and also central banks will be out of way. So, so at that point, you can either bounce back quickly into year end and kind of, you know, r let's say get to 2200 or, 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 you know, reach all time highs. Or if things turn ugly, you could then, you know, continue lower, you know, like, but, you know, sort of 5% of a pullback, we think is probably more likely than not. You mentioned the elections. Is that a volatility event in November or into it, November? It, it is. It, it, it should add to volatility. Market is not pricing all that much of it. Uh, we think probably should price. You know, uh, uh, the programs are very different. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the sort of pool, uh, national polling are, are within statistical error. You know, so so it's 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 not it's not clear. Um, uh, at least the way I read the data, and then there are a few technical drivers, you know, like specifically related to tax, mm -hmm. uh, uh, treatment of, of tax, uh, capital gains um, tax, you know, which could actually, um, you know, push market either way. Right. Yeah. You hear about all these um, sort of high profile headliner uh, investment strategists saying that they are cautious going to year end. I mean, not mm -hmm. only is September seasonally a bad month, as you had mm -hmm. mentioned, but also they also agree that the elections could be a risk. Are you concerned that, speaking of crowded trades, that being bearish the market is actually uh, the prevalent view right now? 
so so there's definitely difference between what I would call systematic investors and fundamental investors you know so if you look at the actually equity long short hedge funds their exposure you know if you look at the beta of these different funds it's actually relatively low you know so I think that's one sort of a, a, a potentially positive catalyst that the, the fundamental community is relatively bearish on the other hand systematic community is actually fairly long right um, you know so uh, so to your point it, seasonal says as you said September tends to be weak December tends to be the strongest month N November once when the elections are out of the way you know could provide some certainty and some boost to market you know like so so I think probably towards the end of the year market more more likely to than, than than not and last right. question you mentioned a five percent correction mm -hmm. is is a it sounds like a base case for you in the month of September what's Correct. the bear what's the worst so case, the bear case would really be like um, related to central banks you know if we do have so some right uh, raise rates in right, September, right, and I think investors are looking more even closer to ECB and BOJ. Okay. You know, um, you know, I, I, I think in September, Fed unlikely to, to, to raise the rate, but I think sort of if investors sense that ECB and BOJ are changing their course, you know, they may sort of anticipate. And, and, and price that, and, and that could, uh, you know, it could trigger a tail event, you know, because basically you would have bonds and equities selling off at the same time. Um, um, we try to estimate how much these assets benefited from the central balance sheet expansion. And then you take that premium out. We take the premium out. You know, if you look at it, it's like in equities about 20 percent, in bonds seven to ten years, 10 percent, gold about six to seven percent. So these are large numbers. Like if if there is basically central banks make a shift. And the market starts anticipating and right. positioning for it. That would be—I don't think it's going to happen. I think uh -huh. Fed is not going to do anything in September, and I think ECB BOJ probably stay dovish. But that's a tail risk okay. if they decide to do so. Marco, great to see you again, Thank Marco Kalanovich, JP Morgan. All right, so that's like well, your can your boat. Yeah, that is my boat. I like that boat, but the problem is, there's a lot of people in that boat right now. So to your point, you know, probably the risk is anything that that we kind of melt up here. But there are a lot of risk events. So I think you know, buying VIX, buying volatility one way or the other. If you just want to buy puts on your portfolio, maybe that's the easier way to do it. I'll defer to Pete to buy the, buy the best way to buy it. But with VIX at 11 or 12, that seems to me like the no-brainer trade into this. But, but the notion that volatility is so low and so therefore you can you can buy those calls yep. or, or puts right. and it sort of just, it, it creates inaction. It does. Well, I'll tell you what, I think he brings up all the right points, which is seasonality. You talk about that. And then all of a sudden you talk about the political risk. And then you talk about the central banks. I mean, this combination of all of that tells me, why wouldn't you be buying protection? And if you're not buying protection, something we talked about yesterday, stock replacement strategies. It's inexpensive to be able to do that right now. And in my opinion, the best way, if you understand your portfolio well enough, Hedge it in whatever covers your portfolio best. Are you S&P exposed? Are you exposed to a specific sector? There are sector ways to actually hedge your positions. That's how you want to attack right now with these low volatilities. The market already did melt up. It was up 10%. The market's moving sideways, as he said. If it's a 6% sell-off, we get right back down to around the 200 day, which is 2056 in the S&P cash. The problem is you have to thread that needle for two months because he, think he thinks the market's going right back up. So for the average person, you want to lighten up, sleep better at night, you can do that. For the big pension funds, mutual funds, they're not selling. All right, coming up, Mr. Wonderful's worldview on the markets. Kevin O'Leary just made a big trade in his portfolio. He'll tell us where he's putting his money right now. We'll give you a hint. Not in the U.S. Plus, why are traders making big bullish bets on Twitter ahead of tomorrow's big board meeting? We'll tell you right after this. Stay tuned.